Well, uh, hello everyone. Um, as Natalia just pointed out, we are, uh, all of us coming from Russia, are quite uh, sleep deprived right now because, well, uh, it so tragically happened that all these, uh, this wonderful forum is basically taking uh, part just as uh, some kind of a small revolution in Russia started unfolding, right? So on May 6th, all these dramatic events happened with the levels of unseen police brutality in Russia. And now what we have is uh, hundreds and thousands of people out on the streets of Moscow kind of doing maneuvers against uh, the police and trying to figure out how they can effectively resist the system. So because all of us have definitely been taking a big part in trying to figure out how to effectively resist the system and uh, this doesn't really fit with getting uh, too much sleep. So um, all of us, uh, all members of the Russian delegation in Oslo right now are kind of, uh, well, not getting your daily eight hour average of necessary sleep by a big margin. So to introduce myself, as was said before, uh, it's not me who is uh, famous for provocative uh, political actions, but it's uh, two, art, two political art collectives I'd like to represent here. Uh, one is the Voina group, of which I'm a founding member, and the other one is uh, the feminist punk band called uh, Pussy Riot. And people who closely follow the situation in Russia have probably heard both names, more likely the um, Pussy Riot more likely than Voina because it's been in the news lately, which does, uh, which does serve as a reason for giggles when uh, some conservative American uh, radio commentator tries to say the phrase Pussy Riot 15 or 20 times during a two-minute radio translation. Just, it's, just, it's, it's a rare chance to say these words on a conservative US radio station. Let me first introduce you Voina Group uh, briefly and then I'll talk about the Pussy Riot case and what's been happening, how the case of the girls who are arrested in connection with this band has become a very iconic event happening in Russia in the past few months. So the Voina art group, of which I'm one of the founding members, was first brought um, to the spotlight about five years ago when uh, a group of people got together who decided that right now it's the time to uh, produce very bold and creative political statements, but with instead of using the traditional language of uh, politics accepted everywhere in the world, we as people with an artistic and uh, cinematic background, we thought it's much more effective to uh, bring these statements to the people with the methods of contemporary art and cinema. We started producing uh, these so-called art actions, which have gained quite a lot of publicity and basically uh, developed uh, somewhat of a new face of Russian politics and have to, to a certain extent shaped the uh, image, the cultural image of Russia abroad. So uh, just to name you a few of the actions we have done, for example, in 2008, at the height of the world's economic crisis, the, when Putin was in charge of the Prime Minister, Voina Group did this action called uh, Training on the Siege of the White House which uh, involved uh, the Voina group drawing a 50 by 50 meter cross uh, skull and bones symbol on uh, Russia's parliament from uh, across the Moscow river and from atop uh, kind of a Stalinist skyscraper standing on the other side of the river. And at the same time, a group of Voina activists kind of did a mock siege of the parliament. So they just scaled the fence and made a run through through the parliament grounds. And surprisingly, everyone is always very scared of Russian law enforcement, but surprisingly, uh, it was four in the morning, and the first officials appeared like 20 minutes later. So that was a big uh, embarrassment for security of Russia's parliament. Um, also, a couple of years ago, um, we made an action um, 
which looked like the lynching and the execution of uh, three Central Asian migrant workers and uh, two homosexual actors. And this action was staged like a gift to Moscow Mayor Lushkov, who, uh, in our understanding, had a very special relationship with the violating rights of these two specific uh, groups of people, homosexuals and uh, migrant workers. Another action to bring to you is the uh, 2011 Smooch the Cop action, done over the course of several months, and uh, a film depicting this action was published on March 1st, 2011, on the day when, uh, after reform initiated by President Medvedev, Russia's police was officially transferred from, uh, its name was changed from Mil Mil Militia, the old Soviet name, to police. And uh, just to give a Western audience an understanding, to a lot of Russians, the word police, first of all, brings um, the law enforcement squads of the German, uh, the Nazi law enforcement squads, which were in place in Russia during the Second World War. So this is the first association with the word police that probably most Russians have. So it was an interesting renaming incident. So. Uh, and th this action, which uh, well, you have to watch the film, it's available on YouTube. So, and this action uh, was meant to say that uh, after President Medvedev renamed law Russia's law enforcement from mil militia to police, that uh, the Russian population, which the better part of it has a very difficult relationship, a very bad attitude towards the police will uh, instantly fall in love with Russia's law enforcement and will start producing something like this on the streets. And of course, everyone was very surprised and shocked at the reaction because all these uh, hundreds of police women which were kissed during the course of this action, none of them responded adequately. So all of them was just were instantly kind of shocked and insulted, but none of them thought that the girls who were uh, brutally kissing them, she'd be arrested or charged or anything like that. So these are three uh, Voina actions I'd like to bring to your attention just to show kind of uh, what, just to give you an example of what, uh, of how we chose the language of contemporary art to make statements on the political situation in Russia. Uh, coming back to the Pussy Riot case, is probably the second uh, art collective after Voina, which has gained international attention, but uh, also became a very tragic case and very closely connected to myself because one of the members of, uh, one of the arrested members of Pussy Riot is my wife, Nadezhda Tolokonnikova, and also the mother of our four-year-old daughter. And the, one of, another member of Pussy Riot also has a small child, a five-year-old son. And usually in Russia, this would be a very strong ground to not be arrested, but to have your criminal case reviewed while you, you're under house arrest or just under some other, just not under arrest, not in prison, but uh, because the group was doing very bright political anti-Putinist actions, of course, three members of its got arrested. And before we get to the details of the arrest, let's um, watch a couple of musical videos of Pussy Riot. So this... Um So uh, th this action, so what Pussy Riot does is they do basically non-sanctioned punk performances in various public places around Moscow and after that uh, video clips are published on the internet and uh, all of these, uh, the subject, these songs are very, uh, have a very strong political message all the time and of course it's punk music. So the previous uh, song which you just saw was a part of the 
uh, liberates the paving stone clip. And the next song is called Kropotkin Vodka, which is uh, done in, uh, as a non-sanctioned performance in various uh, expensive restaurants and shops around Moscow. Let's see it. So uh, another action the group did, which we're about to see, was on top of uh, Moscow Detention Center Number 1, where a number of uh, prisoners arrested after the first big uh, protest on December 5th, after the parliamentary elections, were held, including myself and uh, Alexei Navalny, Ilya Yashin, and a number of other figures, around up to 100 people. So Pussy Riot did uh, uh, one of their punk performance is basically on top of uh, this prison. And if we can have the volume a bit up. So, and the next uh, song we're about to see really did get a huge amount of publicity both inside Russia and abroad because uh, it was done like in a very landmark spot which is known to anyone who has ever seen uh, some kind of pictures from Russia. It was done on Red Square and uh, the soft version of the title is uh, Putin Got Scared and the more brutal version of it is Putin Pissed Himself. That's the Russian. So, and this uh, action was uh, succeeded by a gigantic number of articles in the foreign media, which, was, uh, which were titled, like, uh, so on front pages of uh, foreign newspapers, you could see huge titles like, uh, Putin got scared, says Moscow punk band. And uh, sources said that the Kremlin administration really didn't like this kind of publicity. So um, that was it, and um, the next action, the next uh, Pussy Riot performance we're about to see was, is actually the one the uh, girls are, were arrested and charged for. Um, this performance happened uh, two weeks before the, the March 4th presidential elections, and it was basically dedicated to uh, protest against the very close relationship uh, the Russian government has with the Russian Orthodox Church. In fact, the head of the Russian Orthodox Church, Patriarch Kirill, at first in December he said that, uh, oh, Christian people, in December when the big protests were happening in Moscow, he said that Christian people never go to political rallies and shouldn't go. And then in January he actually started um, doing propaganda for Putin and uh, asking Christian people to vote for Putin. So it's kind of all these uh, contradictory statements coming from the uh, Russian Orthodox Church made many people to see the, this very formally very respected and uh, ancient Russian institution becoming just a mere tool in the hands of the Kremlin. So uh, this song, 
titled Mother Virgin Mary Please Drive Putin Away, was performed inside uh, Moscow's main cathedral, inside the Cathedral of Christ the Savior. And um, not right after it, but a week later only, the three members of Pussy Riot were arrested and they're still in prison. I'll talk in a few more detail, detail about that after we see the video. <laughs> So, <laughs> this is how events started unfolding after this, uh, the Mother, Ma Mother Virgin Mary Please Drive Putin Away Pussy Riot uh, song did take place and appeared on the internet. So, this, uh, they performed the song on February 21st, and at first, both the police, like the local police and church security had absolutely no questions to the girls. Well, really, because like five girls in masks and in Russian Orthodox churches, you're supposed to have your head covered, come inside a church with their, like with something with guitars and some of the girls not uh, carrying anything. They, uh, of course, they didn't sing a lot, a bit, a better part of this song. This is a lot of this is just uh, movie editing and. Uh, the whole performance inside the cathedral was about 50 seconds. And after that, security just approached them and said, like, please go away. And they went away. So nobody had absolutely no questions. But a couple hours later, this video was published on the internet. In the next few days, it got several million views. It went very uh, public and very high in Russian and Western media. And supposedly, Patriarch Kirill, the head of Russian Orthodox Church, phoned Putin and head of the Moscow police, and asked these um, God-tainting hooligans to be punished adequately. And of course, the uh, Putin's administration, and Putin personally himself, saw this as a wonderful opportunity to kind of uh, bring the brutal force of Russian law enforcement on Pussy Riot. Nothing happens for two weeks, and then on March 3rd, I um, come to meet my wife, Nadia, this is March 3rd, this is a day before the presidential election. And we go into this uh, like Moscow back alley in this uh, sleeping area, not far from the center, and suddenly, as 30 or 40 plain clothed FSB agents with their guns open, just popping out of nowhere, pointing guns at us, screaming like, get down on the floor, this is FSB. So we're put down on the floor, like dangerous terrorists, we have guns pointed at our heads. All these uh, ex people in expensive looking suits appear with their phones. They instantly start phoning somewhere, talking. Uh, we got them, they're all, <laughs> it's covered, it's covered like Mr. General or something like that. Then we get taken to some ex very expensive, uh, expensive uh, cars where we have to wait for a few hours. Uh, during which uh, these uh, more people in expensive suits arrive and start going around the cars and talking on the phones. Then we get uh, taken to one of Moscow's central police divisions and uh, six or seven uh, special case investigators appear at two in the morning. And then this huge uh, interrogation process happens from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m., which is illegal, of course. And at 7 a.m., uh, I'm said that I can go, and uh, my wife Nadia and another girl is, uh, will be set to Moscow City Prison. And uh, of course, this was immediately uh, a very big event in the media, and uh, everyone was shocked that this happened. A few days later, on March, uh, a week later, on March 15th, another member of Pussy Riot gets arrested, because apparently the two girls wasn't enough. And, um, in the, over the course of two weeks, this case instantaneously becomes like an 
iconic symbol of uh, Putin's repressions. And right now, uh, together with the Khodorkovsky case, while well, it's the biggest uh, Putin imprisonment story in the country. Amnesty International declared them prisoners of conscience. All the three girls in beginning of April basically doubling the number of prisoners, of officially admitted prisoners of conscience in Russia from just two, this is Khodorkovsky and Platon Lebedev, to five, plus three members of Pussy Riot. Nadia Tolokonikova, my wife, and two other girls, Maria, Alyohina and Katerina Samutsevich. So right now, a big international campaign is going on to free these girls, and a lot of actions are happening all over the world. And, uh, well, if you have the chance, please check out the freepussyriot.org website and find a way to join this campaign and to help liberate the girls, because uh, Putin personally is deciding their fate, and it's a very tough situation. They could get up to seven years in prison for singing Mother Virgin Mary, please drive Putin away. Thank you.